Mr. Parker here for my fourth installment of The Disturbing, Disgusting, and Taboo. Uh, these films, uh, I kind of thought a little bit about. Uh, one of them, my uh, DVD fiend, I was talking to him, and he said it, and I was like, yeah, that one actually did disturb me, and I, I know it's not like the most disturbing movie ever to some people, and it is mainstream, and it does seem out of place, maybe in this video, but it, it got to me. I can't lie. Let's start off with the trio. The Disturbing. The Girl Next Door. I put this in this red case. Uh, this movie actually really got to me. It's a Jack Ketchum story. And, uh, I'm not gonna lie, it really feels like uh, Stand By Me, which is kind of depressing because it goes through, like, little, t little childhood and, you know, it gets that, like, nostalgia feel and Stand By Me. It's like that, but just if your childhood was a living hell. Basic plot of this movie, Girl Next Door, is, uh, Ruth, who is the neighborhood kind of mom, uh, has a daughter, not a daughter, uh, she takes in a niece, two nieces of hers, and she treats one so bad that eventually it escalates, it's based on true story, I believe, escalates into the neighborhood boys fucking her, raping her, just doing ungodly disgusting things to her while Ruth is basically happy about it. It's horribly dis disgusting. By the end of the movie, I had three major feelings. I was depressed, I was helpless, and I was angry. And you know what's good when you're fucking on the edge of your seat ready to bash a character's head in yourself if you could get away with it. Uh, it just felt like that, and I was just angry throughout and depressed throughout and the girl next door did that it was just depressing and disturbing it disturbed me and it was just something that was a uh, I didn't expect it got me it went on the radar and it got me I didn't expect it to disturb me it's girl next door disturbing let's go into the disgusting love it or hate it, it it's disgusting there's no doubt about it header Edward Lee's header this movie I think was actually a graphic novel at one point hence the over-the-top insanity it's a stupid kind of weird plot. Uh, basically, it's a movie that... Uh, I'm going to spoil it here, so... Basically, a header is the ultimate revenge. You basically drill into someone's head and you fuck their brains, basically killing them, but getting revenge on their family or something. It's basically the Hatfields, McCoys, times 100 with uh, fucking perverted sexual acts, I guess. <laughs> but anyways, the movie itself, I understand the plot is completely strange and really stretched out and a lot of moments happen that are really stretched out but I think that was just really necessarily to make uh, the ending uh, man turned really the movie just basically uh, shows that the movie can do anything to you I guess basically makes a man who despised and looked down upon all of this and he ends up doing it himself it's just disgusting the idea and it really gets you as the grandpappy like hump that head boy and hit your peck of snout out and have a brain. You're just like, are you fucking serious? Are they saying this? Am I getting aroused a little bit? I'm just kidding. Anyway, <laughs> it was really disgusting. I watched this one by myself, or I don't know what would happen if I was watching with someone. I'd be like, looking at them constantly in, in agony. But Header, I actually like this movie. I got a really good kick out of it. I was disgusted, and it was a wild strip. It is definitely insanely perverse. And finally, the taboo. What could possibly be taboo uh, to this guy over here? But uh, this one, you know, I've only watched this movie once, and I did never open this edition. I felt I didn't want to open it and rewatch it. I only watched it once. I really need to see it again. But its stain is on my brain. So, Salo, 120 days of Sodom. Jeez, man. I mean, this movie is just like the biggest taboo ever. Not only is it a movie about uh, fascism and torture, it's not that so much as what the victims are in this movie. I mean, it's, it's the children. Uh, they're basically teenagers. And it, the one line that really gets to me is uh, when they're, they have all the kids bent over in a dark room and they say, We look at everyone's ass. Whoever has the best asshole will immediately die. I'll say, how disgusting is that? If that's not taboo, I don't know what it is. Child pornography, basically, uh, eating poop. Just a sick, sick film, and I don't necessarily understand the whole meaning behind it or what it was made for. I know the director had made other films that were actually uh, well-made, uh, classic movies. This one's very well-made, which it really, I mean, like... That's what this part that gets to you in the end and stuff and all these people. 
they die and it's just like it's just so unfair and it's just so breaking all the rules and it's just actually I think some of the people weren't even 18 when they're in this I don't even know how this is on DVD you know it's just like one of those ones that like it's just nice addition like this and it's just shocking that it's there it's just a crazy movie and I'm not sure if I grasp the whole meaning as well in this it's just something that I know was just like boom I was like wow it was hard to get through I was like kind of you know the whole time and like I said this is the ultimate taboo movie. I mean, this is on everyone's disturbing list. Everyone's list of, oh my god, movies. Sallow. Right after Cannibal Holocaust, you'll hear Sallow. And, you know, it belongs there because, I mean, it's the only movie you'll ever see where they get, uh, what, like 20 kids and just torture, rape, and do whatever they want to them. And it's insane. And it's just like a pervert's fantasy or something like that. I don't know. But here's the three films. The Disturbing, The Girl Next Door, The Disgusting, Header, and The Taboo. Sallow. 120 days of Sodom. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.